All right, welcome guys. Uh, welcome to my tutorial about the cinematic settings for your Mavic Air in 2020. Guys, if you bought this little beast in 2020, then you are a legend because it's still word, it is still a beast and it will still do the job. So let's start right now. So the first thing that you want to be aware of is that you have it in video mode of course because if you tap on his icon right here you can go to uh, photo mode so you can make pictures with the drone but you don't want that for now you want to make a video all right so then we go to the menu up here and we go to the video icon and there you can uh, put in some really cool settings because you can choose between the video size and that is the resolution in how you film your footage. For me, that is 4K 25 frames per second. Uh, I know a lot of people shoot in 30 frames per second and then just slow it down and post so that you have a bit more of a dreamy look. So really that uh, is something that you need to figure out for yourself. Um, then you see these different, uh, different uh, video size, 2.7K, uh, uh, sorry, 1080p and uh, 720p. And you see that in 1080p you can shoot in 120 frames per second and that is a really, really cool slow motion. All right, let's go to the video format, guys. And I hear that some people say that MOV is better when you're using a Mac and if you're using uh, like a laptop for Windows then MP4 will be better. But I didn't notice any difference. I always use MP4 uh, on my Dell. So maybe when you're a Mac user use MOV and yeah just leave in the comment if you notice a difference. But for me MP4 is the best setting so far. Then we got white balance guys and in white balance very important because you don't want to put your white balance in automation. And why is that? Why do you don't want to put your white balance in automation? Because when you're flying and suddenly the sun is coming behind the cloud and light is changing in your video then the light will also change in your video because you didn't have any control over your light because you put it on automation so always be aware to put it on cloudy or most of the time i use sunny and if you are indoors like me right now and you want to manip manipulate the setting you can create a customized setting so you can make it a bit more cooler give it a cooler look or if you want to give it a more warm look you can tap on the plus button and 48,000 k that is good for me right now all right so let's go over to the style settings and i created my own picture profile what i really like so the first setting uh, first icon means that you put down the sharpness because if you shoot in 4k your footage will look really really sharp if you like that good for me if you don't like that put it on minus one and uh, if you want to put uh, if you want to give the sharpness back you can do that in post as well so the second icon right here means in the contrast so how contrasty your footage will look you can crank it all the way up but for me minus one is perfect and the last icon is the saturation and i leave that on zero all right then we have our color modes and you have two different modes you have decent alike or none and oh man guys i watched a lot of tutorials about this so basically decent alike is a flat profile so when you're color grading, you have a bit more opportunity to play around with the colors. You can stretch it a bit more, all right? So let's go over in here. And this is fun because 
you can choose again between automation and manual mode. Choose of course manual mode because in manual you have the best control and in automation you don't have that. So choose manual. Then we have the ISO guys and for the ones who just bought a Mavic Air and who are totally new in the video world, the ISO is there to crank up the light. All right, so I will show you, very easy. 100 right here is my ISO right now and you don't see my face. So if you crank it up a little bit, you see you will get more and more light. But be aware that you never crank up your ISO too much because if you crank it up too much, you will lose a lot of quality in your video and that doesn't really look professional. So I always be aware that I put my ISO on 100 but for now I'm inside and I don't shoot for uh, like a company or a wedding so 400 is fine. Then we go to the shutter speed and what is the shutter speed? The shutter speed uh, controls the motion in the video and um, so what we see with our eyes that is something that we want to show people in the video right so that means that the motion blur needs to be real in the video as well and you can control that with the shutter speed and how do you do that we have a rule for that and the rule is the 180 degree rule that basically means that you double your shutter speed so what does that mean okay there we go if you are shooting your videos like me in 4k 25 frames per second your shutter speed will double and it will be one of a 50 of a second right so 150 of a second if you shoot in 60 frames per second it doubled so it will be 120 of a second. If you shoot in 100 frames per second, your shutter speed will double and it will be 200 of a second, all right? So that is something to keep in mind. And uh, to get the best out of your drone, and um, wait, let me crank it up a little bit more. To get the best out of the drone, and to double your shutter speed you need to have one of these little filters right here and what it does whoop, what it does it will when it is very light you put one of these on your drone and it is like a sunglass for the lens so it will avoid overexposing it will avoid uh, too much light coming in to your lens so you can keep the shutter speed on the right number and that's something that you want but guys hey you can also break this rule because you don't need to listen to everybody so that's what i did in the beginning i listened to everybody i bought these nd filters i bought the filter for my camera but you can also break the rule and what happens when you break the rule so let me crank this all the way up so imagine it is really light uh, outside, all right? So, and you don't have an ND filter. So one thing that you can do is break the rule and just crank up your shutter speed until you think it is good. So let's say right here. So now I have a shutter speed of 120 of a second. So that means my motion blur doesn't look really realistic anymore so this is my motion blur so what did we say usually or normally i need to put it on one of a 50 so then it is the best for the human eyes so the real more realistic for the human eye and if i put my shutter speed all the way up it gets more and more unnatural but guys you are flying with the drone and you are all the way up in the air there is not much of a motion going on so why not just crank up the shutter speed and break the rule but that is something that you need to decide for yourself all right let's go over 
to the last settings. And that is one little tool that I use all the time when I'm shooting my videos. I use a grid, you already seen it on the, uh, on the screen. If I put my grid off, you see nothing. And if you want to center your object, you put your grid lines on and then you see a perfect square where you can center your object. All right, so you can keep stuff in the middle and that's something that I uh, find very, very useful. And let's go to these three dots up here because we want to manipulate our gimbal. Where are you? Gimbal, gimbal, gimbal. Here are you somewhere, right? Yeah, you go up here, then you go to advanced settings and uh, no, there on the camera icon, you go and then you uh, touch on camera gimbal advanced settings. And then you see that you can create three different presets for your gimbal and that is awesome because you not shoot your videos always in the same setting. Maybe you shoot for a client that is riding on his motorbike and you need to react really quick with your gimbal and maybe you will shoot on a wedding that you want to have the best cinematic setting and that's nice if you created a preset already for that. So the configuration number one is a preset, configuration number two is a preset, and three is a preset as well. So I'm gonna show you the different guys because in here we're gonna manipulate our gimbal speed. So our max gimbal pitch speed is now very slow. And why? Because I put it all the way down to one. So I'm gonna show you right now how it looks. It goes really, really slowly. And now I will show you the difference because if I put it up to 100, boom, it goes really fast. So I would say for a cinematic shot, I would crank it all the way down to, I say maybe five, that's really nice. And then we have uh, another really cool setting and that's the gimbal pitch smoothness. That is, if I control my gimbal with the joystick and I let, go, I let go of the joystick, how smooth will my gimbal still go up or down, all right? So how smooth is that? So I'm gonna show you now with an example. I'll make it a little bit more, a little bit faster here. So let's crank it all the way down to one or to zero. So my gimbal will stop immediately if I, let go of the uh, joystick so let's go up stop let's go up stop and now i crank it all the way up and you will see that if i go down i let go whoo, and it goes really smooth uh, down and i will let go and it goes really smooth up well, it's a bit too smooth for me, 30, so I would say 19 and 19 and five or six. But guys, you need to figure out what fits for you and what you like, so. The last setting is, right here you see advanced settings, and then you go to EXP. And guys, this is very cool, cool because we can manipulate our joystick. So how sensitive will our joystick will be? Okay, so for now, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna put it in sport mode. So look what will happen to these blue lines. Boom. You see that these blue lines are almost straight. So that means everything response really quick. If I want to put my uh, throttle up or throttle down, it goes really quick and it responds immediately. If I want to rotate to the right or rotate to the left, it goes quick and the same forward or backwards. But if you want to have that cinematic feeling, that everybody, uh, everything goes really slow and 
sensitive and relaxed. Then I will put it to normal again and you can manipulate it with these numbers right here. So for example, one of 0 0.50 is straight and 0 0.10 is with a nice curve and that it means it goes slowly up and slowly down. All right, also in here, please figure out what fits for you. Then we go to sensitivity and in here guys, I tested a few things, but I couldn't really notice a difference for the attitude. So I just left it on uh, the default settings. Uh, I left the brake on the default settings. So how quick it will break, I wouldn't uh, play around in the setting. And for the jaw endpoint it is also how sensitive everything is going for your Mavic Air. So I also left it on 35. You can um, also use these numbers or just if you want, play around and figure out something for yourself. Yeah, cool guys, so that's it. That was my tutorial about cinematic settings for your Mavic Air. And guys, keep one thing in your mind because of course you need to have the right settings to uh, shoot really cool cinematic footage. But there is one thing that you need more than settings and that is flying skills, all right? So go outside and practice and put in these hours of flying. And guys, if you want to show me your video, then put a link below and I will check it out. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, give me a thumb up. If you have another really cool uh, settings that you want to share, then put it in the comments below. Have a nice day. See ya.